Hey everybody, Riot Mort here with the 1022 patch rundown. Uh, gonna do something a little different this time, starting from now on. Uh, ever since we launched Fates, we've actually been growing the TFT team and have expanded, which is pretty awesome. And it's allowed me to do some things like focus more on leadership in other areas, as well as expand our live team. And so as our live team has grown, uh, we have a new lead of live pod, which is Static. So joining me today, Static will be here to help run things down. So. Static, you want to say hi real quick? Yeah, I mean, excited. I know I've been on here once, but I think this is always fun for me. Kind of help give some insight into how we're doing things. Cool. So for patch 1022, kind of our main goal here is we came off kind of a uh, rough patch. If you want more insight into that, you can check out the uh, patch postmortem, which we're both on. Uh, but because of that, we just had that big B patch. We're going to kind of keep the changes here a little small. Uh, we're holding off on some of maybe our bigger reworks on things like Keeper, uh, you know, other stuff like that. So for now, we're keeping it really relatively small, relatively light touch, but do want to touch a few things that are out of line and kind of try to squeeze things a little closer. So cool. So with that, uh, first things we have are system changes. Two pretty easy ones here, nothing major. The first one is actually more of a quality of life change, which is just... There was a lot of confusion whenever Gallia would beat somebody in stage two and they'd still have 100 health left over. Uh, Zerat Portal also did this occasionally. So now if that happens, you take one damage. Uh, again, this only affects if that's the only thing left. Gallio and Zerat do not add an extra damage in normal cases. It is literally just if you would take zero damage, instead you take one. So this should help with clarity, small quality of life thing. Uh, the other one is a nice quality of life thing here, which is the chosen roll percentages are now displayed on the shop tooltip. Uh, so if you hover over, you can see this is level 6. So at level 6, you have a 10% chance to see a 1 cost chosen, 45, 2, 45, 3, 0, 4, and 0, 5. So check that out uh, if you were curious what the exact odds are at each level. Okay, on the balance side, let's talk about Cultist and Keeper real quick. Static, what are you doing there? Yeah, I mean, these two these two traits kind of have an interesting interaction with the Chosen system in that sometimes when you grab the Chosen and you run one less of that trait, you kind of feel like you're losing out, uh, especially on since we added the new star level system to Galio in the last patch. Um, and we, we just found it, you know, an easy opportunity here to just make them count as two of each of their trait if they're Chosen. Um, so hopefully it just makes those specifically cultist chosen or keeper chosen a little bit more attractive as options. Nice. Now, I got to ask you and preemptive the question, because everyone's going to ask this, because I know I did. Uh, why not do this to spirit chosens? Yeah, I mean, I, we, we really thought about it. I, I, I really thought about it. But looking at the data that we have, spirit chosen are actually performing quite well. Um, I think it'd be scary. I mean, I just, I just tried to imagine like Ari, spirit, chosen spirit Ari, like casting and just giving her whole team like I don't even know how much attack speed. But... Yeah, I agree. Oh, the, <laughs> the like 150 percent attack speed for a spirit chosen Ari does sound a little out of line. So definitely agree with you on that call there. So, all right. Next up, we have Dazzler, and Dazzler has been kind of in a rough spot for a while, where. You know, you could run two. It was fine to run two. Maybe a Morgana, maybe a Lissandra, no big deal. But you basically never, ever ran four. Um, and we kind of had this hard line we were sticking to, which is we didn't want the debuff to be different numbers, right? Where it was like, you see that debuff icon, and it means different things. But it looks like now we're moving away from that. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, we really couldn't find another way to make Dazzler, you know, on two more attractive. So we... we basically kind of broke our real original kind of rule on having that just be a 50% and kind of scale it up when you go up to four Dazzlers or three Dazzlers with the Chosen. Um, this should really help, you know, like actually make running multiple of them a, a, a valid strategy to counter specifically, you know, AD compositions. The, the duration going to 15 seconds was kind of negligible. Um, I mean, like, especially on characters like Morgana, who was already putting it up for so long, it just didn't really make a difference and fights were already ending. Um, you know, if this is a little confusing, we might consider adding some visual effects to make it clear that this is like the stronger version of Dazzler. Um, but that's not something that's in yet. Yeah, I think this is positive because it'll make Dazzler Chosen a lot more attractive because you can hit that four uh, with a Dazzler Chosen. Uh, and I'll also say this is one of those times where even though we had this design philosophy we wanted to hold, 
uh, making a suboptimal choice now to get it into players' hands sooner. I agree with that direction. So cool, happy to see. Uh, Ninja, last patch, we buffed it from 120 to 150, and we're pulling back on that. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, I think we were, this is just, and if you guys watch the postmortem, we'll probably talk a lot more about this, but we, you know, we, and I, honestly, I, I overshot on a couple different uh, things, and that's that's a big learning lesson for me, just trying to be a bit more metered when things are already, potentially already, you know, okay. Um, Ninja in particular, they are a little awkward to run together because you have that weird drought where you're kind of trying to find all four of them. Um, but at the end of the day, you're only fielding four units for this bonus, and that's a lot of stats. So, uh, you know, just looking at re reviewing all of our data, I think it's it's just reasonable that we could uh, lower this trade just a bit because we think, I mean, I, I like where the rest of the ninjas are at as units. They all feel pretty uh, valuable to their team. So, nice. Okay, now Sharpshooter, this is one I, I want to talk about a bit because I play a lot of Sharpshooter. I played it when it was Divine Heavy, and now all of a sudden it seems like it's the S-tier comp. It's become very well. And so we're buffing two Sharpshooter, uh, which I heavily agree with because two Sharpshooter is kind of like negligible. Uh, four Sharpshooter is staying the exact same. And on paper, what looks like a big Sharpshooter nerf to six. Uh, if you look at this number and you're going, wow... 35 to 45, that's a big nerf. Uh, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, honestly, since the beginning of the set release, we, we I mean, I knew, I looked I looked at Sharpshooter's data. It's like the only way to play the composition is to go six all in. And obviously once we patch, it kind of became a, a very obvious that this is a very, very, very strong strategy. My hope for this change is just to reduce the power of six Sharpshooters so that it's possible to run, be more happy running, you know, two and four, not feeling like you always have to stretch for six. I do think there's probably some extra work we may need to do in the future in terms of balancing the sharpshooters themselves. Right now, the the team comp is very jinx jinx centric, um, and we want to make sure all the other sharpshooters also feel, you know, valid. Yeah, we that's, see that's something that we'll. Do. Yeah, we we see some other changes upcoming here too, where it's like in in the patch, like Vayne's going to get some buffs. We'll talk about, but. Definitely happy to see this. It should open up because right now it does basically feel like you're playing the five sharpshooters with a sharpshooter chosen and the rest of your comps pretty much made up. So I'm excited to see more variations of sharpshooter be more viable and it just not quite be the S tier comp it is right now. So, all right, on to the one cost champions. Um, not a lot of champ changes this patch, just a few small things here. Uh, but first off, let's talk about Fiora. She's getting our first change that we've ever done to chosen where the stat they're getting is different. Uh, she started off with HP, and we're switching that to mana reduction. Yeah, I mean, I think right now, as a chosen, Fiora sometimes gets picked as kind of like a transition character that can kind of win you some early rounds, and then eventually you sell her off when you go for a big roll down. This, we're hoping, helps her scale a bit better into the late game as a chosen, so you might be able to come up with some interesting builds that kind of cycle her spell and make her almost like nigh invulnerable for for like most of the combat um we weren't exactly able to get that to work in our playtest but i'm excited for the possibility so it's definitely I, an experiment here i i think our playtests weren't running it optimally either so i think there's definitely ways to make this work uh, even beforehand i've seen that work lightly um so yeah it should be interesting to see and if anything this might also be a power spike or a different way to play duelist things like that so that should be pretty cool uh okay probably the next change i'm the most excited for this patch uh Lissandra is a character I think has done very well, especially if you can get the blue buff jeweled gauntlet IE version. Um, I think some players are starting to figure out that's a really good build, as much as Milk called it not a comp back in the days. But with this change, instead of alting her current target, she will alt whoever has the highest AD on the enemy team. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this is one of those changes that we weren't sure about i think we were just like typing back and forth one night and i think more just like hey this would like blow my mind but what if what if lissandra targeted the highest ad character because i think we were discussing a lot about how some of the dazzlers don't use the dazzler trait well enough um, besides like morgana so this is something that we, we we tested and man i had a lot of fun play testing this you know i would see my my lissandra kind of turn and like uh hit her spell on a on a talent who's trying to kill somebody and it just felt so awesome um it's going to be interesting. I think it actually is a buff, but it's it's definitely not like a pure numbers. Yeah. 
What I really like about this buff is that, like, if you're playing Lissandra carry, not a lot changes, but this gives you a lot more reason to actually tech in a Lissandra. Like, you might actually consider holding on to that Lissandra to deal with the Talon, to deal with the Zed, things like that. So that's a pretty cool option. Uh, and then finally, we have just a vain AP buff. Yeah, yeah, we're just buffing her damage. She's she's kind of been a chosen that you really never, you never really pick. You might do it for some early rounds and try to steal some, but I, I've just noticed a lot of players just skipping over her and her data's pretty weak. She's often just used as a sharpshooter yeah, trait yeah. activator. Um, so hopefully we're opening up a little bit more options on trying to actually itemize her, or at least, you know, considering her as a, as a real unit that's just not a sharpshooter tag. Yeah, I think, if anything, Dusk Chosen Vein was basically a non-unit. Sharpshooter you take for the tag, like you said, but Dusk uh, now being like you could run an early four Dusk and get the, uh, you know, a lot of true damage from Vein here. So excited to see if this changes anything. So should be cool. All right, only one two-cost change, um, but it's a decent chunk of stuff. Uh, Vi, like Fiora, is getting the mana reduction instead of HP as a Chosen, as well as her armor shred is lasting a little longer, and her three-star damage is going up quite a bit. What are your thoughts? I think by and far away, like at least our understanding of the Chosen stat system is that the mana reduction is one of the most powerful things you could do for, for uh, Chosen. Um, so we're hoping that makes her a lot more viable as a choice, because I think yeah, viable. Oh, man, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Um, you know, we just got excited about the idea of her kind of, like, chaining her punches and just, like, destroying enemies who are clumped up. Uh, beyond that, like, her three-star was just struggling a little bit, so we, we upped the power of that so that it's actually potentially a character that you want to invest in for three-star. And additionally, like, the, the shred duration was simply a... It increased to her ability to to access her utility. I think a lot of the brawlers, they have like slight utility, but often are not getting a ton of value out of it. This is just the guess that you know actually characters who can benefit from the the armor shred, say like a fellow Warwick or Ash, are actually going to more guaranteed get that uptime on that shred. So uh, hopefully this makes Vi a lot more viable. Oh, yeah. Did I say it again? <laughs> I know uh, you're also, you know, spoilers, starting to work on Zen Zhao a bit, so hopefully as that resolves also, that'll make Zen Zhao a bit more viable in the future as well. So Nice. All right, three costs. Okay, this change I thought was really smart. Uh, you want to talk about the Akali change? Yeah, I mean, Akali right now, I mean, regardless of, of the ninja nerf, was, is, is kind of still really, 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 really scary. In particular, though, she's only very scary when she hits kind of optimal items and otherwise she's like a solid unit i'd say um in particular i think people know blue buff ie rfc i believe is the current yep. current op build on her yep um and we've haven't used this lever a lot but it's one that directly attacks uh her synergy with the blue buff. so we're basically making it so that she won't be able to gain mana again after casting um quarter second later so it goes from one second to 1.25 that just means with a blue buff she won't she'll be chaining just slightly slower that means it'll take her just that much longer to get through the rest of your team um so i'm hoping that it'll actually free up her to not just always feel like she's just a blue buff bot um we may have to finagle some of the numbers later on to, to help match this but this is kind of a first step yeah like i said i really like this change because again one of our goals for this set was to not have champs tied as much to the items and so this alleviates that so that now you might actually consider like IE, uh, RFC, and then maybe like a jeweled gauntlet or maybe something else. Uh, just opens up some options and you don't have to build the blue buff. So, uh, And then Evelyn and Nunu kind of get in the same change. So we'll talk about them at the same time. But basically three star buffs, three star more impactful. We did this last patch with Kennen as well. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think it's just pretty straightforward. These are two characters that were struggling a lot according to our data at the three class tier. And especially like Nunu, I know players were super excited to try to get him to work and doing like gunblade builds and stuff. And it just wasn't panning out. I mean, that's something that, you know, we want to see if we can actually make work. So we upped the damage a lot. I hope it does something. Nice. Cool. Okay, four cost. Ooh, this one's a good one. Ari. Uh, we have definitely seen... Ever since the B patch, a very large uptick in RE builds, typically with Jeweled Gauntlet, GA, and some other second Jeweled Gauntlet, IE, whatever, run it with some Vanguards, hide that in the back line. 
and eventually the enemy team goes boom. So, uh, it looks like we are lowering her just a little bit at one star and a decent chunk at two star. Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, as, as we pulled, the, we did the B patch to fix the, the divine mess we made. I, we were already starting to peer through the veil and see Ari be a very dominant force. She was already kind of strong before that point, but I, w I was we were watching a lot of the aftermath. She seemed to be extremely consistent pick if you could just hit her in your shot. Um, so the best way to nerf her, honestly, is just to lower her damage a bit, just so it's, you know, in case you're running Mystic, you might be able to, or if you're itemizing, like, some actual MR health, you can actually potentially survive her, her spell cast. Nice. Yeah, I think this will be good at bringing RE comps down just a little bit so that other comps can succeed as well. Um, so hopefully this brings that down a bit. Uh, on the Ash side, we finally fixed a very annoying bug. There was actually two bugs here. Uh, a lot of people reported the, you know, Jax wasn't dodging Flurry. Uh, what we found out was actually Jax was dodging the first hit of Flurry, but every hit after that wasn't following normal rules, which meant it couldn't crit, it couldn't be dodged. It was very awkward, so we fixed that. So now Jax will uh, dodge all the hits, and if you build IE on Ash, you'll actually get five crits, not one crit and four small hits. Uh, so this should open up Ash itemization and just fix a bug. Good stuff here. Uh, and then lastly, Morgana. Now... Players hate random targeting. They just, they absolutely hate it. We know that. Uh, but sometimes for these big AoE spells, it still creates healthy variation. So with Morgana, it looks like we're trying something different where it's a bit more controlled random. You want to go into that? Yeah, I mean, playing Morgana, you know, it's awesome when she drops a pool onto the enemy team and it's hitting most of the units, but sometimes she kind of ints and goes for the corner unit and just has it lit sitting off the board. Um, we don't necessarily want to remove that from being a potential, you know, uh, outcome. But now she's going to basically choose between two two random units and find the one that has more nearby enemies near it. So she's going to be much more consistent with putting it in a in a smarter spot. Uh, she won't always hit optimal spot, but hopefully this makes her a lot more engaging as a carry. Because uh, when you commit items to a carry and then they just completely troll you, it's just very so. Yeah, like I said, I know some players have a pretty big hesitation with the randomness, but the reality is if she always hit the most consistent spot, uh, the game would get pretty flat. So pretty happy with this change. Excited to see how it plays out. Uh, on the five cost side, uh, Ezreal, uh, generally here, his spell just comes out a little late to really make a difference. It's a very powerful spell. We're not concerned with the power of that spell, uh, but we're going to let that first cast come out a little sooner. That way Ezreal can do some more damage, heal your team up, and actually heal them when it matters. So should be good there. Uh, Lee Sin. Let's talk about Lee Sin. What are your thoughts here, J-Buck? Or static? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, Lee Sin is actually the highest performing uh, five cost unit, according to our team. And on top of that, he can just be really frustrating to play against. You know, he's knocking your dudes off, uh, or dudes as well. Uh even if they have, you know, tons of tank items. And that's, that's we meant for that to be a thing. But one of the most frustrating parts I find playing Lee Sin is just the fact that he locks down his target so long that they can't even react to anything that's happening. So hopefully this change, mainly to reduce the, the, the stun duration on the primary target, allows for the person he's punching and kicking to potentially, you know, get one cast off and contribute to the fight before they go flying off the map. Um, I think that's, you know, hopefully this is not a huge hit to him. We don't really, we, we like that Lee Sin's a strong character, and I think he's a very unique one. Hoping this notches him down just a little bit, and hopefully makes him a lot less frustrating to play against when he's kind of just rolling over. Makes sense. All right, on the Lilia side, pretty small change here, but kind of an important one. Uh, Lilia, her damage is 500, 750, 1,000. Uh, but that was also increasing the damage threshold needed to break the sleep to get that damage. And so while you would level her up to two star and get more damage, it might be harder to break that sleep threshold. So we removed that so that now it's always, if you do 500 damage, you break that threshold, but you're still getting the increased damage at two star and at three star uh, of 750 and 1000. So you still get the more damage, but it should be easier to break that threshold, allowing Lilia to actually be damaged. And keep in mind that is damage before dusk, 
You're running a six dusk Lilia. That's a lot of damage. So should be good. Happy days. Uh, and then set. Set is our last. Uh, we changed the stat on chosen here. Uh, this one's interesting because you would think, hey, it's set frontline gets HP. But as a chosen, we're actually giving him spell power now. So if you get a chosen set, he is going to be scary. And we buffed the primary damage. So what do you got here? Yeah, I think actually for brawlers, especially in the, going into the late game, in where you can only find you know set unless you super lucky off the fortune bet or something. Um, the the four HP honestly just wasn't very valuable to him. He's already got a bunch of HP from the brawler, and he's got a lot because he's a five cost, and you know it just wasn't actually contributing. Um, and we always wanted him to be kind of like a carry in in that regard. So giving him a spell power as a chosen stat, which just made a lot more sense to us. Um, on top of that, he is a little bit weak now after the changes we made to him a couple patches ago, I think, um, where we increased his mana cost so that his cadence of cast wasn't... Uh, and you hear his little, like, sound play five times. Ah! <laughs> yeah. um, and so like, continuing with that, that theory, instead of, you know, going backwards and, and making him cast a bunch again, I just wanted to pump up the damage so that when he picks up that unit, it's, it's pretty much going to die. So... Hopefully this gives him that little boost that he needs. I don't think he was a terrible character, but he definitely needs Nice. Okay. Uh, that's it for champions. We have a few item changes. Uh, uh, J-Bok, why don't you just run through these? Yeah. Um, Ludens, we made a, a change to Shiv to remove the bonus damage from CC targets. Um, and, you know, these two items are very closely related to each other. They were both doing their bonus damage on CC and shielded targets. We wanted to pull those apart so that, because we found that those two events, you know, being crowd controlled or shielded was basically like 90% of a combat in TFT right now in this set. So uh, trying to give, you know, Ludens and Static Shiv a more clear identity. So Shiv is, is strong against shielded units, and Ludens still has that uh, CC, the CC connection. And that, you know, keeps alive a lot of the cool builds that people are playing with right now, like the, the Bubble Bubble Nami, <laughs> other fun stuff like that. Uh, Rabadons, yeah, this item's a, a, a struggling a little bit to find its place. I think right now um, we see it, you know, kind of picked up as like a, call it a pity item, but it's like, yeah, I had to build it, or, or I found it, and it kind of works. I'm like, just trying to make it a little bit more attractive. We really want to go small here, just because we think it's already a decent item, and we don't want to, like, overshoot like we have in so... Uh, and lastly, Hurricane, it's just right now it's a it's a pretty unattractive item overall. It, it has some specific synergy with some characters like Zed, maybe Callista. Um, so we're just trying to find ways to bump it up so that it doesn't feel so bad to make if you have to make it. It's it's quite it's quite a weak item overall in most cases. Don't necessarily think this gets us the whole way. We want to experiment with some bigger changes in the future, but we wanted to kind of throw Hurricane in now just to make you know, when you're building it as like a third item on an AD character, maybe it's, it's not just the worst item ever. <laughs> yeah, that should certainly bring it up a bit. And like you said, won't feel as bad if you're stuck building it. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to call you out on this one because it, it's nice that I think people realize sometimes we don't agree on things. Uh, there will be differences of opinions. Uh, this is one, the static shift change, I was like, I'm not so sure about this one. What are you doing? You want to talk about this one? Yeah, I mean, post the hotfix, removing the the CC'd uh, part of the of the bonus damage, like the CC'd units keep taking the bonus damage, uh, felt like it weakened the item a lot. Um, all of its its most powerful use cases were basically characters being CC'd, whether it was from the adept attack speed slow or Warwick fearing people. Um, it kind of felt like it lost its a, a place inside of the item system, and so I just wanted to push its specific. Use purpose within, within the item system it might be crazy uh and uh, i will apologize <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see uh, the the nice thing is though there are some shield builds out there the janna thresh elderwood comp for example that like if that became meta having a counter option to that will be good so in that regard i do hope there is some success these numbers do scare the shit out of me but we'll see we'll see uh, Zeke's just a slight pullback from last patch. I'm sure we'll talk about that in the post-mortem. Uh, and then finally, Zerat. This looks like a nerf, but I don't think it really is. You want to talk about this one? 
Yeah, it doesn't really do much because taunts, I mean, as, as, as TFT goes, once a unit's taunted, they kind of stay on the target unless some other news happens, like they get stunned or something goes untargetable or stuff like that. So Warlesses won't have to do anything besides fix some kind of buggy interactions. Right now, if, if a melee character gets taunted and they can't find a spot next to the person they want to attack, they'll like walk circles around to try to figure out how to get near them. And this will just like reduce that. They'll start walking and then they'll realize, oh, wait, I can't get to it anymore go attacks whoever's nearby yeah this has generally been a good change to prevent some of those buggy interactions so that's sweet uh lastly bug fixes and i'm just going to run down these real quick uh divine damage reduction was also reducing true damage so if you wondered why those divine mirror matchups before the hot fix were a little weird that's why that's been fixed uh nunu no longer eats set before he does his workout uh, this is one you could argue if it was intended or not, but the reality is a 3 cost eating a 5 cost and his entire unique ability feels like shit, so we decided to remove that. Uh, fixed a bug where Static Shiv could target invalid things like GA or set doing sit-ups, so that's been fixed. Fixed a bug where Zerat Construct had 10 more AD than intended. Somebody typed a number wrong is my guess there. Uh, fixed a bug where you could get the Zerat portal taunt by equipping it mid-combat. Man, this made for some really buggy interactions if you knew what to do with it. Uh, Exile will no longer fail to create their shield when placed next to a Galio summon. That's a pain in the ass bug. Uh, Talon will now run through the attack flow when attacking with his spell. This will trigger Rageblade, Shiv, etc. So if you ever wanted to build static Shiv Talon, congratulations. Uh, and finally, taunts will no longer persist if the taunter becomes untargetable. So no more crazy Zerat Zed shenanigans. So, all right. Any closing thoughts on 10.22? No, I mean, I just hope that uh, we have a, a nice, fun patch. Because I think the meta is actually quite diverse right now. And hopefully this just squeezes it, like you said, a little bit tighter and make a couple of more fun builds. Sweet. Sweet. So yeah, that's going to do it for this patch. As always, it goes live uh, on the next Wednesday from the time you're watching this. Uh, on behalf of everyone on the team, that's going to do it for now. Until next time, take it easy.